What's up with it, man? It's the Kid Push, man. Mitch, host of the No Fluff Podcast, man. I got two of my brothers in here. We got Preston, the Fed Connect. You know what I mean? Doing anything and everything with government contracting. And I got my brother Hans in here. He's a healthcare specialist, so you know what time it is. He literally is a serial entrepreneur. He got. I just came from eating at one of his restaurants. Him and one of my other close friends own uh, and Cheese. Delicious. So when y'all tap in in Atlanta, go to Buckhead, Lennox Mall. They take care of you. So, brothers, appreciate y'all for coming on here, man. Time, yes, sir. We we with money, money man, man Mitch made a man, call. Listen. I was on my way, like hey, in like the middle that. of making a sandwich. I I like like, oh, somebody <laughs> no, else make this. I gotta go. That's yeah. crazy. Though. Yeah, I had to get y'all on here, bro, because it's just too much insight that y'all people can learn from y'all. Like it's crazy. So before we even go, I don't want to give y'all that. I don't want just my introduction to do it. I'm gonna let y'all one by one explain who y'all are and what y'all got going on, and then we'll just get into some monologue. You know what I mean? Talk about some things. So. Yo, Preston, talk to him. Tell him wh where to find you, what you got going on, and what's popping. Yes, yes. My name is Preston Latham, better known as the Fed Connect. Yeah. Federal Entrepreneur Dreams. So that's what I do. I go ahead and teach people how to win these federal government contracts the easy way. How you make your money is through the spread. Bid the contract, sub it out. That's what, I, that's what it's about. So if y'all want to connect with me, hit me up. All right, cool. Say less, Hans. What's up? Man, I'm just really trying to tell people about being a true entrepreneur. And one thing I did when I was a firefighter for like nine years, I left the fire department because I got tired of getting a paycheck, and I started my own EMS company. So EMS means emergency, emergency medical services, so I could take the average person and get them to start an ambulance company and then grow from there. So the dope thing is you can make money by taking care of people. So I'm trying to get people to understand that the myth of starting a ambulance company, a chiropractor office, a dentist office, you could do that without a degree. You just need a degree, a person with a degree to run it. Mm -hmm. So I could open up a, a, a urgent care right now and I dropped out of college. So I could open up urgent care and have doctors working for me like I do now. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the ambulance company is just, you make so much money and you do so, many, so much good for the community. Yeah. You just get other sources of revenue that come from that. Like I got the restaurant, like you said, I rent my cars out. You know, I got rental properties, and then now I got a home health company as well. So it's just doing one thing that opens the doors for, like, a thousand up. Create a river to create streams. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, we was just talking about that. Like, we was talking about college and, you know, a lot of the things that we think that you need to do. But really, you can own practices, urgent cares, like you were saying, and not even have a degree. And hire doctors and hire dentists and orthodontists to work for you. That's, we get, it's just a, a, what's it called, contrarian mindset. Like, to think. That think differently than others. Think um, an alternative way than, than the norm, like not be sheeple. And the problem is we all victims of what we don't know. Mm -hmm. So before, I did not know this. So I don't try to act like I never cap like, oh, yeah, man, I'm super entrepreneur. I'm a business guy. I, do. I, I did not know all of this shit forever. Mm -hmm. I was working every kind of job ever. I was working restaurants. I worked at Applebee's, Urban Outfitters, all these different jobs. And that taught me a lot of the things that I know about entrepreneurship, too. So I know about systems and, you know, payroll and all these different things that you got to know before you start a business. Uh, I learned from being actually working. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever shit on the people who got jobs. But what I will say is to have the mindset to, at some point in your life, have something that you can pass down. Mm -hmm. Now, you could be a doctor. You can't pass your trade down to your kids. You could be a dentist. You could be all of these, a lawyer. You can't pass that down. Now, if you have a practice or you have some type of company, you can pass that down. And that's the thing. But we vid is what we don't know. So now people like us can be the mirrors for people who grew up similar to us. I grew up in the inner city. I never had a, you know, I didn't come from money. I didn't have a silver spoon. So now I'm in a position to be a mirror for people who came from where I came from and show them that, yo, you ain't got to know everything about business to get into it. You ain't got to have a degree to become a multimillionaire, to have multimillionaire friends, to be able to have come, even take the millionaire out of it, being able to be successful without having a job mm -hmm. and be able to pass down something that is profitable to your children. That's the thing. So I want to ask you a question. Like what's one of the, so, so we, we, we are all successful in our own right and we are all still growing and learning, but What's some of the struggles? I'm going to get both of y'all take on it. But Preston, what was one of your biggest struggles, biggest hurdles, like by being an entrepreneur and, and doing business for yourself? What was the biggest hurdle you ever faced? Yeah, I, I, I want to piggyback on what you just said, too, about mirror, because mm -hmm. I didn't know about entrepreneurship until later on in life. Uh -huh. um, and then, and I get kind of upset a little bit because my pops, he owned a, a dry cleaning service. 
Okay. I never knew that. All I grew up is watching him go to work, watching my mother go to work. I never knew he was an entrepreneur once in a pound of time. And I'm like, man, Pops, how come you never taught me about entrepreneurship? <laughs> you know, I'm going to work, going, going to college, you know, doing all this. And I didn't even know what I wanted to go to college for. I said, Mom, I don't know where I want to go to college. Well, be a school teacher. Okay, I'll go be a school teacher. And look where I'm at now, you know. <laughs> so, um, but one of the struggles that I dealt with, man, being an entrepreneur w- was basically – how to communicate, how to hire uh, people to work for me because I was doing all the work. Um, so when I started my roofing business, when I that was my first one of one of my first businesses I started. Mm-hmm. I had other businesses that I had, but my main business was my roofing business. That's when I really catapulted to the next level. Mm-hmm. And when I was doing my roofing business, I was I was the uh, admin. I answered the phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met the customers and and I was running myself ragged, right. you know, because I I didn't know how to hire people. I right. thought me being an entrepreneur is me going to work, doing all the work, you know. So, but that was one of my struggles, is that I should have delegated more. Delegated more. For sure, that's you know? a key. That's and, a key bar. Well, the systems, systems. Yeah, hiring people to do stuff that you're. Because the thing is, like, we make the mistake because we are smart and stuff like that that we think we can do everything. But I'm sorry to tell everybody that we are not, we don't have, we're not mathematicians, we're not payroll specialists, we're not tax specialists. And it's a surprising thing too. Yeah, you it's like, be like right. I'm running this. I don't care about running. I tell people when you're running a company, you're doing something wrong. I manage companies. Exactly. So, so what did you, how did you break out of that that struggle? Like, did you did you ever break out of it? That's all I'm saying. Yes, I, you know I, what I'm saying. Oh yes, I did. Um, and how I broke out of it, I got a mentor this time. Okay. Uh, and my mentor told me, Preston, you need a system. Um, so I went to his conference every year. I went to his conference. I bought into his program, mm-hmm. and he said to be a true C- CEO, you have to let the company run itself. So you have to trust your hiring, your hiring manager, you and the hiring manager, you both communicate. So you have to get that. Try. He said, I know you, you trying to hold on. You, you want things ran a certain way, but you have to release that control over to your manager. Let him produce. So my manager, what he did, he did all the hiring. Uh, he hired my, my, my admin. Oh, I got a, I got a bomb admin. Um, <laughs> And then uh, they end up hiring all the sales reps. So I just had to oversee everything. Right. Uh, so I did get, I did get it uh, back right. You know, I said, no, yeah, let me get my manager control, and which was a hard thing to do, y'all. For sure. That's hard. I'm, I'm telling y'all, if y'all hire a manager and you got to get full control, and you want to be like, no, no, don't do it this way. You know what but at the same time, I had to come up with my SOP. I, you know, I hired the manager. I thought, okay, let me just hire and, and just tell him what he needed to do. No, you got to have an SOP. This SOP is how you run the company. For, SOP, SOP stands, stands for just, just for the new people. Um, oh, standard, standard operation procedure. So I, I'll say it so much. Standard right. operation SOGs procedure. SOGs too. Some people say SOGs. Yeah. Standard operating yeah. guidelines. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Guidelines. I heard that one too. And so I had to sit down and write, okay, this is. This is what you do when you come in. This is what you do uh, to hire. This is what you do when a customer calls in. I had to write all that down. And I had a copywriter put it where it could be understood. And then I went ahead and say, okay, this is what this is the, this is the SOP manager. This is what you this is your position. Uh, admin, this is your position. This is all what you're supposed to do. Anything that y'all do outside this, y'all not getting paid, and y'all doing y'all doing too much. You know, this is how I want the company ran. Sales reps, this is what we expect from you: door knocking, bringing the contracts in, collecting the check. This is all what you do. Right. So everybody had a SOP that right. they had to follow to the T. Each position, each sure. position, each position. Not not just one. Each position had to to, to go to that. And the good thing. Is that because 
I done every position. Mm -hmm. I kind of different thing. Yeah, I just did. A, I just did a post about that today. I was like, yo, sometimes you gotta be able to do the oil changes. Like I'm in a rental car yeah. game. I was like, you gotta be able to get the t plug them tires, man. Some of them things like you need to know how to do. So when it's time for you to get it done, and someone tells you, oh, this is happening, you be like, nah. It, it can go like this, or or I understand what you're saying you because I've done. Basic yeah, yeah. You yeah. Want your employees being able to yeah. Pull the wool over my, my, thing, my thing, my thing is, is like right. when you want to be the best, you you act like the best. Like you right. you actually go put yourself in a situation to know what you're talking about. Like it's cool to say, oh, I got this business and to do this much money, but when it's not doing as well. Do you say the same type of, you got the same type of confidence? Okay. No, because you got to be able to say, look, this is why is this going on. You got to understand the down seasons, the up seasons. If you never worked in it, just just, just imagine scolding your employees, mm -hmm. right? And you never worked during the slow season. So you don't know the struggle they're going through. So you really, and then me, before I had SOPs, I was coming at my people like, yo, I can't believe y'all not getting these cars booked out because I, when I was doing, I was doing this. But yeah, but I, I knew what to do. If something wasn't going right, and they don't know, they don't know how much the discounts they can give out. How what's the percentage it is? How like can you give them an extra day for free? Like they don't know that yeah. SOPs are show them like, look, this is what you can offer them. This is what you can say. Like, and it's, it's important. But um, before we get off task, I want to ask you, what was your biggest struggle uh, uh, as an entrepreneur, and like how did you overcome that too? Cool. And just real quick, SOGs and OPs, whatever you want to call it, it provides structure. Every employee wants structure. You know what I mean? It's like Dating somebody, you know, a girl wants security. Everybody wants security. So that, I'm pretty sure that helped. Mm -hmm. um, my biggest struggle was life, man. Just life and everything that comes with it. Because you're talking about people like ourselves. You know, my parents are from Haiti. So they, 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 I was born in Queens, New York. Then we moved to Miami. But again, it was like this, this safe haven. And it wasn't nothing to explore outside of that. They just wanted you to wake up and be safe, right? Mm -hmm. So now you got to get these same people that don't really think outside the box to say, I can't live like this. But the fucked up thing is those same people don't believe in you. So mm -hmm. it's like that life. And then now you you trying to, again, go against the grain of, with your family who should be out looking for your better interest, telling you just get a nine to five, right? That's a struggle, right? And then if you like me, you have a kid, so you hustling backwards because mm -hmm. you ain't get your fortune first, then get the kid. So you hustling backwards. So it's, and then we trying to learn everything that we didn't learn in corporate America. So my thing ain't just one specific struggle, it's life, man. Right. <laughs> right. Life and everything yeah. that comes with everything it. Everything was, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it be like that. It's life, and that's why it's, it's such a blessing with like you and all these guys, like Sleepers for Suckers, all these dudes, it's like the information wasn't there, you know, when I was growing up. It was like, you, you, you just gotta go through the struggles, lose a lot of money and, and figure it out as you go. You know, there was nobody in our schools teaching us about uh, operating agreements, partnership agreements, you know, how to correctly do an LLC, your articles of incorporation, your EIN, build uh, business funding. So it's like, yo, my man, I'm about to open this. Can you show me, throw me something? Nah, man, I'm good. Like, this your boy from day one. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, I'm telling you, I'm about to make, let me tell y'all something, man. I went to school with Rick Ross. Okay. Uh oh, okay. I marketed my ambulance company to him. I had a fly and everything. Dope. It has him in a suit, and it said R O S S. It said uh, Ross Onsite Support and Services, mm -hmm. and it had him in front of ambulances and all this. And he's like, "Oh, yo, hit my manager up," and I hit his dude up. But they didn't understand what I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to open up a barber shop, and I didn't get mad at him. But I just knew it wasn't something he was familiar with. I broke down all the numbers. I'm like, "Bro, I can make you a hundred and ten thousand a month," but I just don't think people aren't comfortable investing in something it's we got this mentality where we just stay conformed and like yo if you want to open a barber shop i got you mitch you no, know what i'm saying God. but well, let mitch you know pull it, up you, you can get it yeah. but let mitch pull up in a neighborhood with a lambo and i ain't never seen it. i'll be like what'd you do nigga yeah. it ain't can't be legit yeah. Yeah. you know they think, ain't that the crazy thing it perception. can't be like how you Man, gotta get it all the time and then you gotta work and still hang out with this dude and then work and be cool with somebody who don't believe in you it's bad enough your family don't really do something until you really making it, exactly. you know what I'm saying? So that was my thing. How I overcame it was, I just threw everything by myself anyways. My name's Hans, everybody called me Solo. Actually, I got this tattoo back in 97. 
Uh, Nine, yo, check, check out how Star deep. Star Wars reference. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Check <laughs> out deep how deep this this mentality goes. This is back when I was a kid, and it's me walking away from a crowd of people. That's how old this tattoo is, and it's like you do things on your own. My my Instagram is the real solopreneur because I know people go, you gotta surround yourself. You gotta surround. I don't care who you surround yourself. If I don't want to get up, I'm not getting up. Mitch can call me tomorrow and say, let's play ball, nigga. I'm I'm <laughs> sleeping. I could keep, put you on a play for a million dollar car, Hans. If I really don't want to get up, it don't matter what. I, it does help to surround yourself. I'm not going to, that's a blessing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you got to really want to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was my thing, man. It was just, I love telling, I love proving people wrong. That's a, that's a good thing. So look, it's, it happens to all of us, though. So the problem is, like, I talk about this all the time. So people don't watch your mouth they watch your feet i heard you, you said that the other day i was like yo that's dope i, but I, I, I commented on that too i said you, dope. Yeah. You, said? you was on live you was like yeah. da, da, da. i said oh let me jump on mitch's live he said people don't watch your mouth you i said dope yo for real <laughs> yeah they really don't so in a lot of times we take it's that they don't believe in us is the, the case yeah. it's just that they know us yeah so before look even yourself that's just be real with yourself before you touched it, it's a lot of money, the six figures a month stuff, did you believe that you could do it? No. It was just, you thought you could do it. Yeah, yeah. It's a difference between thinking you can do it and believing you can do it, yeah. right? So until you know, you don't know. So just like you don't know, your people don't know. They remember how inconsistent you was before. They remember the first business you did before, your jobs you had before, the time you told them you was gonna give them some money back, you ain't give them. Mm -hmm. That's what they know. So it's, it's not, that they don't believe in you. They just, they know you. They know you. So my thing was prove it to yourself first. Mm -hmm. then And then they're going to be able to see. Focus on the people who do believe it, though, because that's going to help you keep going. So the problem is we try to go to people who already knew us, and we got a new mentality. We now matured. We figured what our mistakes was, and now we got to move and prove it to ourselves. Then everybody else going to believe it. So people be like, oh, yeah, strangers support you better. Not really. They just don't know you. They don't know you. So when, like, you, if you don't know me, and I tell you, hey, look, I got this going on, you can be like, bet, that's dope. Yeah. Now if I go tell my mom, hey, I got this going on, she's like, nigga, you told me that before. And and that's the thing. So now they watching my feet, though. After I, I done did it now, I done got the 800 credit score. I done got the, uh, the house that I said I was going to get. Yeah. I done got the business. I done got the car. I done got all of these things. Now they're like, hmm, he actually did it. Now, and everybody is acknowledging this. So it's true. So now I believe it. Mm -hmm. So now I can go ask him for advice on what he's done. They wash my feet first. And sometimes we make that mistake with our partners too. Like you tell your girl, how am I going to tell my girl, hey, get your credit out. We're going to be able to do this. And my credit is, is, is 400. Yeah. Babe, get your credit out. We're going to be able to get all these cards. Da, 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 da. Well, your, what's your credit score? 400? Well, I don't feel obligated to do it. You dig what I'm saying? So sometimes you got to show them. My girl listen to everything I say. Yeah. She 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 respects me. She believes it. Now, if you and what's the difference? Now, when you get a girl, now let's say you get a, a woman. I'm not even going to use girl no more because people are going to be like, you talking about a girl. That's how people try to be. Now, let's say you get you a woman who had already got her credit up. She got a nice a job and all that stuff, and she handling business already. And she meets you and you struggling, mm -hmm. right? So now she's helping you out. She's mm -hmm. above you. She's the, damn near the alpha for real. So she helping you up, and now you getting your swag together. And does she respect you? Does she yeah. respect you? If she does, she's a rare breed. No, yeah. she don't. She, 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 might see, she might see the potential in you yeah. and all that, but, but does she respect you? you? Now, when it's time for you to make decisions, now let's say you, she help you out, you get the credit up, you get your money up, you start to move, right? And now, do she respect you? Nah, she going to remember. She, she going to always hold that over you. I helped you, not every time, not 100%. Most times, they're gonna be like, "Yo, I already seen you when you was on the ground." I don't, I don't, it's, so now, when you're trying to be the alpha, it's gonna be a power struggle in those relationships. Nine times out of ten, rare cases, not the case. But most times, that's the struggle. But it's all about respect. And if I respect you, I'll be able to listen to what you gotta say. I can rock with you. So it's about knowing people. Respecting them and then watching your feet before we watch your mouth. I can say whatever I want. I can tell you, hey, Hans, bro, I'm shit. man, that ambulance that you're doing, that shit ain't shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? We over here making 20 million in a month. And if you don't respect me, nigga, this nigga be talking some cap shit. You know what I mean? And and the same thing is like, I, I'm disrespecting his ambulance company and I, I, I'm i not even in that industry. That's me, nigga, and the ambulance company's making fucking billions of dollars. But that's the, it's all about respect. And that's what people don't get. So 
you gotta you gotta earn respect. Yeah. We wanna get it. We we know our worth to ourselves. But when everybody walking around saying, I know my worth, I know my worth, fam. That's true. If we if I don't know it ain't it ain't true. Yeah. So a lot of people don't understand. We gotta wash those feet. So understand that. So I'm forgiving the people who was who, who was like that with me when I was covering yeah. them. When people say they ain't believe like my mom, uh, like my mom believed in me. She wanted me to do well. So she was trying to keep me safe. Mm -hmm. Go to the military. Do the do I know military, man? I'm gonna do my own business. My, but now I pay her a mortgage. Yeah. She okay with that. Uh, yeah, I got I got a couple of people uh, as you speak. I got a couple of people that actually joined my course mm -hmm. because they seen me. They seen where I, or I came from and they seen I come up. So they, they watched me. Uh -huh. And, and I, everybody who buy my course, I said, why did you, you pick my course? Why you didn't go to so-and-so, so-and-so? I picked you because, Preston, I seen where you came from. I, I believed in you, what you was doing. So that's why I invested in your course because I seen you come up. Receipts. Yeah. Receipts. Social proof. Yeah. So that's that's the realest thing. And yeah. and exactly. Exactly. So that's that's a thing, man. Like what we we in this time right now, this is the this is the what have you done for me lately type of era. Like literally type like where people if they if you don't have a social media, a lot of times they don't respect you just because of that. Mm -hmm. And you could be doing your thing, like high level. People would think like I, I I do I do pretty well, I do pretty well, but there are people who do better than me who don't have social media, mm -hmm. and because they see me all the time, my perception is that I still have more than them, mm -hmm. even the people who got money, oh, yeah. wow. because of how the world is, and like you get you get caught up, yo, you get really caught up in this world. Me, I get I know what it is, yeah. I, I I I get it. I still watch people feet the same way offline or online. So if you're a person who's moving and you ain't got no followers, I respect it. Yeah. I'm still watching your feet, though. I don't care because I, I live in Atlanta. I don't know if y'all know about Atlanta. Atlanta is, Atlanta is the land of the cappers, right? And I ain't talking about, you know, fraternities. You mean cappers. <laughs> it's cappers, right? So when I first got here, I'm learning that these dudes be fluffy for no reason. Like, they be cool-ass dudes. Yeah, yeah. And you lying. For what? Yeah. But it's because it's, it's it's a culture thing too. Like they feel like they gotta be like that. Like yo, I gotta be like I gotta say I had this. When you already dope as shit. So the problem is I watch people feed. That's all I do. So I'm gonna respect you. I don't care if you work at McDonald's. I'm gonna respect you if you're a janitor, if you're a plumber, if you own a company, if you work in the company. But I will not respect you if you cap. We had a situation the other day. Oh, look, look. look. We had a situation the other day, and I told him I got so good at it that I could call cap out. Damn near. From the fucking field, I'd be like, sure I know what time it is. Like I, I, I'm a good at reading energy. You know what I mean? Every now and again, you might could pull one over me, but I'd be like, I told him, and I said, yo, I even told the person who brought her. I said, hey, look, you know, y'all, that's your peoples, but you know, it's it's cat, but you could talk to her and tell her, like, you know, there's no, like, just had that because me, I forgive people too. Like, if you was like that at one point in time. I can be like, yo, you know, I grew, I remember at one point in time, I had some fluff in me. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? When I, I, think, I was, man, we I was did, immature. Man. So, you know, so I don't never, I don't can, I'm not no cancel culture person. I'm a talk to you rehab. Like, yo, you know, you cool as hell. You don't never got to do that. People, I'm going to let you know that humble people get the most information. People who, you know, are, can say where they really are, get respect. People who try to act like they know it all, they get zero information. Why would I want to tell you if you tell me I already know? I would never want to tell nobody no information. How they say the quietest man in the room is usually the strongest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you get the game. Like, if I act like I don't know what's going on, y'all going to tell me what's popping. I can say my value, what I do know. But the problem is, there's no point ever to be like, yeah, man, I'm doing this, this, da, da, da. So we're going to even tell a story because there's no fluff. So, Pete, we were talking to a particular person, and we just talking about regular stuff. We're talking about regular life. I don't know where, where it got the real estate. This person throwing out their resume, cool. This is their first time being around us. They throwing out their resume and all of these things. And, you know, I'm familiar. They don't know me. They have no idea who I am. I like that. I actually prefer that because it is going to make them be can't how they really would be. Right. So now they like, yeah, I'll do this. i do that. I know him. I know them. I'm like, all right, cool. That's dope. Right. All right, cool. But then you let them fluff a little bit. So after the fluff come out, I'm like, damn, they going crazy with the fluff. So why are they doing that? But. In particular, we got we know what we he is in a certain investment, mm -hmm. right? He invested in a certain program that went under, right? 
So this person said, oh, yeah, I know that program. Yeah, it's a way you can take money out of it every day. And I was like, really? I'm like, I damn near know one of the top dudes in that company. And he don't know that play. <laughs> and I said, now let me tell you this. I already knew they was fluffing, but they said this after. And I said, I, I know you're fluffing about some stuff, but if you know that, I said, take it just to see yeah. if it's true so he can get out of his situation. Yeah. And, 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 and it was fluff also. So I was like, damn. You know what I mean? But it's no point to do it. So my problem with people who fluff is this. Everybody knows you capping because you because you never follow through on a deal. Yeah. Now only novices, you you a person who take advantage of novices. And you 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 only take small chunks of change. If you were to actually humble yourself and, and be yourself in a room, you'll get more gain to actually make the real money. What's doper than being able to help people do something that they Yo, when I think about it, bro, and I be like, like when I, I get you, you get we get criticism for helping people. Oh, yeah. That's how our our you know, especially in our culture, we got the crab in the barrel mentality. Like people literally ask me, if you make it so much money, why are you helping other people do it? I be like, hmm, that's crazy that you would think that way. But how good? Just they don't think about how good we feel to be able to be like, yo, I told person about this play that dude, he made like fifty k off of that, right. just because he talked to me. Now he got, yo, he got a C8 Corvette, yo, just because he talked to me. You know what I'm talking about? Like, just how good you, how good would you feel to be able to have, to help people? Like, we could talk a lot of, I could stunt, oh yeah, I pulled, I stunted on him. I, that's what we like. I stunned him on the club. I was making it rain. I'm doing that. that what does that do? But if I could say, yo, every person, I, when I go on live, I help people fix their credit every day. I help people that thought that they was coming from a place that they can't never get out of that I did the same thing. I inspire people every day. Yeah. I help people think that, yo, they don't. They thought they didn't come from a background where they got investment money, but they use their credit to be that initial investor. I help them do that every day. How good does that make me feel? So I want people to make money. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. what the, how good is yeah, it feel? I'm going to tell you, man, I, I am. It's a dope feeling, but I love what y'all young dudes are doing. So I'm older than y'all. But I was telling Gucci, and I think it was Brad, and I was like, dang, y'all young niggas getting it. But I love it, right? right. So one of my, my friends, he bought this, like, $5 million house. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, I'm a celebrator because I know I could get mine. So I love watching. I, like, if I see one of my mentees ambulance down the road, I'm like, nigga, I see you. I see you. I'm taking pictures of it. Like, because that's such a dope feeling that somebody you helped can now set a path for their family. And it, you know, we it's doing such a that. big trajectory yeah. too. And it's just not having that animosity. Or je it's like, it has to start with not having jealousy in you. You know what I mean? Like I videotaped this dude's house on Facebook and it was so big, I'm just like this. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody commented, yo, congratulations. I'm like, no, that's not my house. I, I celebrate it like it's mine. But nah, that was somebody else's. You know what I mean? So it's a dope feeling knowing that you put somebody in position. It's it's almost as good as having kids. It's like it's, to, to me, it's better yeah. than receiving. Oh yeah, it's to me, better than receiving. Giving, bruh, how good did you feel? You feel doing something for somebody. Yeah. It feels better than when you get a gift. When you get a gift, I gotta work on my reactions. Right. Because when I get stuff, like he brought me a gift today, and it was it felt dope. Oh, but man, I ain't bring yeah, he brought money. he brought me the Versace, yo. Hey, look, really, bro? Man, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. thank you. Bought a grilled cheese sandwich. Yo, for <laughs> but you already got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got he got me free for life, bro. You got me plenty of gifts, bro. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate y'all. Yeah. But the thing about it is, like, get, getting stuff is cool. But when I give stuff, it feels way better because you get to watch their reaction yeah. to how they feel about getting it. It feels great. So, and then that's why I had to get better at receiving because I used to be like, nah, man, I'm good. I got it. I'll take care of it type of thing. But I'm taking that feeling away from them yeah. for giving me some. I'll be like, yo, what the? I, I had to work on it. But my thing about it with the people, bro, like the impact thing, I could have never imagined doing what I do now. I never started to do this, to teach. Or I was just trying to get make money. I was trying to make a little bit of money. First, it was just to pay my high car note. Then all of a sudden, I started making more money than I ever made ever. I'm like, I'm like, damn, I got twenty. I remember I had, I remember I had twenty k in the bank. I was uh, all my life. I got twenty k. I was like, I got twenty k in the bank. I was like, yo. And then, and then this was the this was the thing with twenty k in the bank. I said, I got twenty k in the bank, and I don't need a damn thing. I don't need nothing. So I know I'm about to make more. So I was like, yo. And then um, the crazy thing about it, when I had my students make twenty thousand, then I had my students make fifty. Man, I'm like, and then they like, yo, they they'll never forget that. They be like, yo, Mitch, when I touch my first million, yo, I'll be like, bruh, I literally be thinking about it all the time. I be like, I can't believe I do this now. And and it's a lot of jobs. I could sell cheeseburgers. Yeah. You can get give me money. 
You can get your food and go on about your business in your life. But this, I, you give me money now and you get money <laughs> forever. Like you got a trade that you can make money. So I just love that thing. And I love what y'all do too, because y'all pick, y'all doing that too now. And I know y'all feel good about it. So before we get out of here, I want, I want to make sure you give them some of the game from what you teach. Okay. Like that's what no fluff is about. So I want you to give them something that they could take from watching this episode, go home and go do right now. So let me let me get that. Let me start with you. All right. I'm gonna tell y'all the I'm gonna tell y'all the easiest play when you get into federal government contracting. And I'm telling y'all some gems that I don't think nobody is teaching when they teach federal government contracts. The best way to win federal government contracts right now are no risk contracts. Preston, what are no risk contracts? No risk contracts are RFQ, request for quote contracts. Now I teach mainly all my students construction, but you can take this game and do it forever, whether it's car rentals, because uh, government needs car rentals, whether it's finding uh, uh, houses for the government, whether it's trucking, uh, whatever it is that you can take this play is being on RFQ contracts. So what you do, go to sam.gov. You got to get registered with Sam first. Once you register with Sam's, then you... You go ahead and look for RFQ contracts on SAM.org. You look for those contracts, and then it's going to take a little time. It may take 30 minutes to 45 minutes, but once you find one, you fill it out, and you send it in. And then a lot of people say, well, man, Preston, how do you know what to bid? Well, the good thing about the government is that they give you the budget. Now, how many people go give a budget, Mitch? When you got this room done, that you say, "Oh, I got this budget." You know, I got, I got fifty thousand. No, you ask for a quote. Right. Yeah. But the good thing about the government, they not go ask for a quote. They go say, "We got twenty five thousand to a hundred thousand. How much you gonna give us a bid for?" So let me let me give y'all example, Mitch, or huh? Let me ask both of y'all this. I need this phone clean, and I got. $5,000, I got between $5 and $5,000 to get this phone clean. How much, what would be your bid? Uh, $49.99. I was going to say $4,500. <laughs> okay, what, well, man, well, y'all, 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 oh, wait, 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 wait. Because yeah. most people, most people will say, uh, $5 to 5000 they'll probably, they probably say half of that. They'll probably say 2000 you know, but I was like, why you want to leave money on the table? Right. I'm putting the bid in as close to that budget as I can. Right. So I put that bid in, like one deal that I'd done, uh, the sign contract, uh, they had up to 100000 I bid it 80, 87000 And the government called me back. So when it, when you put the bid in, and, the, and like I said, the good thing about RFQ contracts, you can either accept it, you could deny it, you negotiate, or you can stall which is my favorite when you bid RFQ. So when the government called me and said, Preston, we want to award you this contract. I say, government, I'm sorry. Y'all caught me in the middle of something right now. Is it okay for me to call you back? Within 48 hours, sometime I'd ask them for 72 hours. I really want to do business with you guys, but can y'all please just give me 48 hours, 72 hours. Let me call you right back. I'm using the note. And so they said, okay, Preston, give us a call back. Uh, Cause I'm not accepting the bid right now. I just want to go over my numbers, make sure you know uh, what I'm what I'm getting into. And they said no problem. So this is the time where now I go out and I look for subcontractors. So I got 40 hours to look for a subcontractor to give me a price. Cause I bid this job for 87. So now I'm on the phone with the subcontractor. Trying, and, and somebody's going to say, well, how you find subcontractors? I'm giving y'all game, man. Yes, sir. Man, it's getting hot in here. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. How, how you find the manufacturer? So I go to the manufacturer. I don't go to uh, Thumbtack, uh, friends and family. I go to the manufacturer. Hey, manufacturer. Because the government, like I said again, they're going to give you what's called a statement of W, uh, uh, SOW, statement of work. Everything in that statement of work is going to have what they need. So that project, they needed a hardy board siding. So I called the hardy board manufacturer. Hey, who's your best person in this area that can give me a price on getting an install? Oh, that would be, that would be Mike. 
Mike with Mike with Hardy Board. He does all our installs. He's great. So I said, okay, I call Mike. Mike, man, I don't know what you're paying the manufacturer, but man, he said you're the number one guy who can put this stuff on on this on this government building for me. So I need your price for, and I need it quick, and I need you to bid sight unseen. And on top of that, I want you to add ten percent on top of that. Oh, okay, Preston, you know, I'm, I'm I'm pumping the dude up. He's sticking his chest out. Yeah, yeah, okay. And she said, well, all right, Preston, I have it for you tomorrow. And then the community, like we talked about communication before, the communication that you give is the response that you get. So I'm communicating because I need a response back. So I call him up, and he well, he calls me up and say, okay, Preston, I have it for you tomorrow. I said, okay, Mike, um, are you going to have it ready for me tomorrow at what time? Oh, I have it ready for you at 3.30. I said, okay, Mike, is this your cell phone? I'm calling your or the office number. Oh, this is my, this is my, uh, uh, the office number. Okay, Mike, what's your cell phone number? Okay, all right, Mike, what's, can I text you at this number? Oh yeah. Okay, Mike, what's your email address? He gives me email address. Okay, Mike, I'm gonna call you back tomorrow at three fifteen. I just need you to have this stuff ready for me because it's it's important. I gotta, I got my foot in the door with the government. I just gotta give him this price so we can get to work. He said, no problem, Preston. I got you. So call Mike tomorrow. He he gives me he gives me the quote. He says thirty thousand. I was like, okay, eighty seven thirty thousand. Easy. I was like, okay, good. Now, do y'all think I accept? I called the government back and accepted that quote. I mean that uh, contract. Yes, sir. Look good, though. Not so fast. Like I said, no risk contracts. You can accept. You can deny. You can negotiate. You can stall. So now I'm in negotiation mode. Hey, government. Uh, thank you for, for patiently waiting on me. You know, I talked to my guy. There's some, you know, we got to get the material there. Uh, so we're going to have some, some, some delays. We just really need to go ahead and uh, I want to see if I can add uh, five more thousand to this bid. And if we do that, you know, we can go ahead and move forward. And then they got the start. Oh, well, Preston, uh, I say, okay, i tell you what. If you do it for three more thousand, because, you know, cost materials going up, you know, if you can just do three more thousand, I'll go ahead and sign right now. Oh, okay, Preston, we'll, we'll do, we'll do three. As long as you sign right now. I said, okay, no problem. Sign, sign. Um, he sends it back to me from the sign. I call the, the, uh, and that's why I accept it now. So I call the contractor back. Hey, Mike Hardy board, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I talked to the government, but man, for me to have this thing within budget, can you take two thousand off your price? It's <laughs> <laughs> not in here. So he's like, all right, Preston, because you gotta remember, I told him to add ten percent on top. He may have added fifteen or twenty. Right. So I know he he added he made it making some money. Okay. Yeah. So so now I, he's take two thousand off. So I just negotiated. I got put five more thousand dollars in my pocket, just like that. So I increased the spread. Yeah. So uh that's a bar. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I did. Got them together, hired me a foreman, so I only had to be down there. My foreman sends me pictures. I give him an SOP. This is all you got. Tell me who all show up, what you do for the day, how many uh I'm take all pictures of everything. You start and this is your end time. Make sure everybody's out and 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 let me know when the job is done. I do a walkthrough with the government, and and then I'm back. Government pays me within two weeks, so I'm telling you that's the that's the RFQ play, y'all. Y'all got to run it. I'm telling you, you can make a bag. That's that's the easy route of getting in the federal government contract. The easy way of winning the federal government. You don't need no experience. I don't. I, every government contract that I did, I don't even have a clue how to do it. <laughs> don't even have a clue. I bid on everything: roofing, gutter, siding. Plumbing, electrical, windmills, wind tunnels, anything that the government has for construction, I've been on because I know I don't have to do it. And I know Ty, he asked me the other day, can you put a pool in? No, I don't know how to do it, but I can find somebody who can do it. Quick, fast, and hurry. <laughs> That's bars. All right, cool. Damn, you dropped Hines, two we gotta, yeah, Hines, we gotta, we gotta get you to follow up. Uh, I'm right not. That was Hines, give, him, give him something they can take <laughs> home. Goodness, freaking gracious, man. You gave him the whole recipe. No, 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 you good, man. Um. Anybody who wants to start an ambulance company, I'm going to tell you like this. Once you get your ambulance, you get your LLC and all that. The one thing that you want to do is you want to think outside the box, right?
But first, you find a need and you supply the need. So if you know that you want to deal with a particular group of people, you go to social workers and you ask them, what is your biggest problem? Because there's a lot of ambulance companies out there, right? Find out what that social worker might say. They might say, my biggest problem with ambulance companies is lack of communication and timing. All right, cool. Give me an opportunity of one patient. You see what I'm saying? Once they give you one patient, you got to prove your worth. You never overpromise and underdeliver. You always say, listen, I'm not going to lie to you. This is Atlanta. We will be late sometimes, but I will promise you that we'll always communicate with you and we'll be 10 minutes. You know, we're going to let you know, hey, we're running five minutes late, 10 minutes late. Because you got to think, in an ambulance business, one patient equivalent is equivalent to like $6,000, $5,000. So when you get 20 patients, you're making 100000 a month, right? But this is the thing. You don't stick on that 20 patients you're doing because once you're transporting those 20 patients, you go, okay, now we've dominated, let's say, dialysis, right? We conquered dialysis. We're making 100000 a month on this. Like right now, somebody literally sent me a text message and, and said, I need your ambulance for a video shoot. How much you charge? I said 250 an hour for my ambulance just to sit in a music video, mm -hmm. right? So now you start thinking, I'm going to not just get comfortable. I'm going to think outside the box. So you start looking for, like you said, government contracts. You go to the mayor's office because they have to, they have to give certain minority businesses contracts right so every time piedmont park you go to piedmont park if they're having a festival find out who's the link on who licenses or who authorizes all the festivals at piedmont park because by by piedmont park or atlanta's law they have to have ems there so you get paid 250 an hour to let your your truck and your employees sit there and watch drunk people party all day and every time i've made money from piedmont park they'll usually pay you for three days they'll pay you for like a friday saturday sunday 10 hour minimum and you're making two hundred fifty dollars. You're not there. Your your EMTs and ambulance are there. So what I'm saying is, you want to do stuff like that. You want Atlanta's the hub right now for movie sets. They pay like three fifty, two fifty to three hundred dollars an hour. This is just extra money you're making for your employees not transporting no one. So like when Tyler Perry's studios call me and somebody they want me to sit there all day, I send one of my employees out there or two of my employees with an ambulance, and they make and Tyler Perry and all these like marvel they'll rent you out for like two weeks at ten, and then you could tell them 10 hour minimum so if they keep you for four hours you're still getting 10. and here's the thing you're you're paying them you're they're paying you 250 an hour and your employees are making 15 dollars an hour but you're going to give your employees 20 dollars an hour just to make them yo listen anybody want to work a movie set it's avengers black panther you know they're paying uh 20, i'm paying 20 dollars an hour so now you're paying 40 dollars an hour but the company's paying you two fifty, mm. so I'm in Miami making two hundred and ten dollars an hour while my truck's sitting on a movie set. Right. What's the chances of somebody actually getting hurt? These guys sit there and they feed your employees. They chilling. They 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 like food. All oh, you can eat food. They can sit there and watch Black Panther do backflips. Like your employees will never not want to do those movies. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's that, and then. When you get an ambulance, again, you always want to find out how you can maximize this truck, right? This truck can make you money. You can make money outside of the truck. I always tell people, when you get into the EMS world or, or healthcare, don't think all my money's tied to the truck. You can pay one of your employees to become a CPR instructor. That's going to get you into nursing homes. And nursing homes, because everybody in nursing homes, hospice, anywhere there's medical people, they need to be CPR certified. So I'm going to be like, yo, Mitch. You run this nursing home? Listen, I'm going to research all your people for free. Give me some of your patients. You see what I'm saying? And like, are you serious? I'll research all your people for free. Right? Because you're only making $25 to research somebody's CPR. So I'll take an L on that. It's a tax write-off. But if you give me three patients and I know I'm making three, four, five hundred dollars per transport, I'd eat that all day. Right? And then when you look at EMS, again, think of out you got to think outside the box. What time of the year is it? It's it's hurricane time, right? So you sign up for FEMA. FEMA pays you $20,000 a week to park a truck. So let's say Texas had a hurricane. They will put you on their emergency disaster, and they'll say, how many trucks are you willing to give us? And you tell them, I got two trucks, two employees, four employees. As soon as they beep you at night, because they got you on their reserve, as soon as AMR uh, beeps you, it's like AMR, AMR disaster relief, they beep you and say, hey, Y'all got to be ready to go in 24 hours. We will send a confirmation text. And once in, in within that 24 hours, if they send your confirmation text, you got your employees on standby. But when they leave your office, they are paying you $200 an hour mm -hmm. to drive all the way to Texas and sit 
and and render aid to anybody who needs it. So minimum one truck's making two trucks are making forty thousand dollars a week. So in in one month you made two hundred thousand to send two employees to Texas or wherever because they won't let you respond in your own state. They'll let you respond in other states. But two hundred thousand you can make on two trucks. And when you call your employees and say, "Y'all just check in," and we're not doing nothing. They got they got people already here. You, you know they got the national guard. They got whoever, but they just need us here as reserves. And I'm like, yo, I'm loving life. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you make it two hundred thousand, and you might pay your employees twenty five dollars an hour. You're make, you're paying both your employees twenty five. They're gonna say, heck yeah, they get room and board and twenty five dollars an hour, and they're getting paid while they sleep. But you know you're making a killing, just cause you're going to you know some place where they needed hurricane relief. You know what I mean? So it's like. You want to maximize that ambulance. Don't just get stuck doing dialysis or transport people to the hospital. Don't, the ambulance can make you so much more money outside of that. Like I get paid from, you know, the movie sets, the natural disasters, hospice, wound care, hyperbaric chamber. I'm trying to figure out every, I'm going to squeeze all the juice out this lemonade. You know what I'm saying? Out this lemon and make sure that I paid $5,000 for this ambulance. It's going to make me twenty to 30000 a month. And so I tell people all the day, if you if you take my master class and you go to my Instagram, take my master class, I'm telling people how to not just make twenty, thirty thousand. Don't be happy with that. My first year I made a mill and I only have four trucks. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and but that was just doing one thing. I didn't know that was just dialysis in hospital. My second year, I'm like, ah, I'm doing movie sets. My third year, I'm doing dialysis hospital movie sets. I'm doing wound care. Wait, my first, my fourth year, I'm doing dialysis, hospital, wound care, movie sets, and nursing homes. And it's the same truck. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm not like expanding. I'm using the same four trucks to do different things because it's healthcare. Unfortunately, we live in a world where people will always be sick and you got to get paid to transport them. So I'm going to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not only transporting, I'm going to use it for movie video. I'm going to use it for somebody's music video. You know what I mean? Somebody got a video called Stretch Them Out and he wants somebody to come out and stretch it. I got you, my dude. 250 an hour. You know what I mean? And they rent it out for like three days because, you know, they got to cut, retake, da 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 da. Last year, somebody rented out my ambulance for Halloween. You know what I mean? 250 an hour. So I'm sitting here, it's off shift. Go ahead, do your thing. So while your employees are not even there, your, your truck is making you money. So I employ people like, if you do this, just have a broad mindset of how can I do it? I'll piggyback off of this. I've looked into government contracts and there's government contracts for transportation. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's like, it's out there. So I'm telling people, yo, you get a VA contract, government contract, whatever, use that ambulance. Those ambulances can make you millions. As you can see, this is two very educated gentlemen in their space, and we're not talking about dudes who heard something on the internet, which is why I wanted to let them say their piece because I know they can break it down for y'all so y'all can understand it. So, like I said, I'm going to get Preston, drop your Instagram. Uh, Preston Inspired. And Hans, drop your IG. The Real Solopreneur. Okay, awesome. So y'all know that's the boy Preston and Mitch. I'm going to drop the links to their courses right here below so y'all can go ahead and tap in with them and make sure y'all take advantage of it because I know y'all going to give me a discount code for y'all share. Oh, okay, so, less. so just because y'all watching it on my show, they're going to take care of y'all. And like we do, man, we holla at y'all next week. No fluff. Get it.